If you just got into medical school and you're hearing things like med school is insanely hard, med school is really competitive, or people in med are really weird, this is the video for you because I'll be tearing down all the secrets and sharing with you everything that I wish I was told going into my first year of medical school. I'm Emil, a third year medical student at Monash University and I'd like to thank 50coach.com.au for sponsoring this video. Keep watching to hear about a special offer of my YouTube subscribers and let's start with the first question that I'm sure is in all of your minds. Is med school actually hard? Well, the short answer is that it is and it isn't which really isn't an answer at all. The content in med school is difficult in quite a few ways. Firstly, the teaching in university is vastly different from anything that you'll have experienced in high school. Often you'll just be given a bunch of lectures to watch at the start of the week, and you won't be given any direction on when or how you should actually use them. The other thing is that the amount of content you'll have to cover in a week is quite large and much more significant than anything you'll have ever experienced. Some parts of this massive amount of content will also feel really, really useless, but you might have to learn it anyway. And then finally, the cherry on top is that there's absolutely no one there to keep you accountable, which means that you could go through all of your first semester without watching a single lecture and then suddenly realize that you had to do all of that two weeks before your exams. However, even though med school is difficult in those ways, it is actually easy in others. For the most part, especially at my university, most exams and tests are actually designed to help you pass rather than trying to fail you or make you struggle through content. Most medical schools in Australia, at least, do not grade or rank their students based on grades. Focusing on studying, the message that I would give myself and that I'll give to you is that focusing on the most important bits will get you very, very far in medical school. You got into medical school in the first place, which means that you're certainly capable of covering the amount of content that they give you. And if you don't get something on the first try, don't worry, because by the time you finish med school, you'll probably have gone over that same thing five or six times. Overall, I think med school is challenging, but it's a good challenge for the people who are able to get into medical school. Looking back in retrospect, it's easy for me to say that the first year of medical school shouldn't be that hard, but in reality, I think that every challenge you're faced with in life is usually appropriate for that stage of life that you're in. So if you got into medical school, medical school will be challenging, but it will be challenging to an extent that causes you to grow and become more intelligent and just a better person in general. I'll talk about making friends and one tip that I haven't heard anyone say on YouTube about medical school, but the next rumor that I'd like to dispel is this idea that med school is competitive. If anything, med school is quite the opposite of competitive and there's a lot of reasons why. From my experience in medical school, the majority of the resources that we have been given are from past students who have made resources that they've shared with their cohort and cohorts to come. In addition, most universities significantly emphasize your learning over the marks that you get on your tests, assignments, or exams. In general, most people emphasize that your preclinical years, which are the years before you go to hospital, are less important in the grand scheme of things in medical school, and as a result, people tend to take it easy, and you'll often see people who are partying a lot, having fun, and generally having a uni life that most students would want to have. It is true that there are lots and lots Lots of smart people in medical school and that can create a sense of competition because you might feel as though you're not good enough but it's important to remember that that feeling is completely normal and the person that you're comparing yourself to probably has that feeling as well. Speaking of people that can help you, something you might be pushing back further and further are your preparations for your upcoming BCE exams, and that's why I'd like to take this moment to talk about the sponsor for today's video, 50 Coach. 50 Coach is a group of tutors who each scored a raw 50 study score in each of their respective subjects, offering weekly online tutoring classes for $20 an hour. They focus on the strategy and skills beyond the content that allow students to perform well in their final year years of schooling. Year 12 is one of the most stressful years imaginable, so having a fellow peer there that you can check in with weekly is enormously beneficial. They've kindly offered a special discount to all of my viewers, so if you would like one free trial class and an exclusive 25% off your first seven classes, please use the code Emil at 50coach.com.au. This leads me really perfectly onto the third thing, which is that doing bad in medical school is not the end of the world. If you feel like you're behind everyone else, that's completely normal. 
If you feel like you don't know what anyone is talking about, that is completely normal. Often you'll see people in class who seem to be able to answer any question that the tutor asks of them, and it's easy to compare yourself to them and wonder if you're just ridiculously behind everyone else. In all honesty, I have been the person who was answering those questions in class, but the truth is that the only reason I was able to answer those questions was because I had skipped three or four weeks of content beforehand. In reality, I was probably just as, if not more behind than the person who was comparing themselves to me and being really worried because of it. The lesson that I would want you guys to take from this is that if you feel like you're the only person who is falling behind in medical school, that is definitely not true. In addition, most if not all medical schools around Australia are moving to a system where internships are given based on your CV and resume rather than any academic results. It is true that getting into internships after your fifth or final year of medical school can be difficult, but in the grand scheme of things, your first year of medicine matters the least towards that. And if you don't do well in first year, you have plenty of time to catch up on that in the future years. In first year, your grades matter the least by far. So instead of putting your head down and studying, instead try to make some friends, volunteer, and build up your CV and the skills that you might need in future years. On the matter of CVs and work experience, this leads me on to my next point, which is about university clubs. University clubs are an incredible way of getting involved in every aspect of medical school, and I highly, highly recommend them. I have an entire point that I want to make about making friends, but clubs are an amazing way to meet and bond with new people. Uni clubs often cover a very general range of activities, things like debating, snow sports, surfing, any hobby that you could basically think of, but in med there are also some med specific clubs. These include things like interests in certain specialties like pediatrics, emergency medicine and cardiology or basically any specialty that you can think of. I wouldn't just recommend going to club events and meeting people there, but I would also highly recommend that you try to get involved in leadership in any one of the clubs. There are so many different clubs to choose from that if you are really keen to put your head in and do the work, I'm sure that you can get a position in leadership somewhere. What I wish I was just told straight up in first year is that when it comes to the success of your career, your leadership and work experience is almost certainly more important than your grades. Having a leadership position in a club or society hits everything that hospitals are looking for in their interns. It adds to your CV, helps you learn how to talk to and meet new people, it helps you make new connections, and also through these clubs and societies is a great way to get very good work experience as well. This leads me on to my advice for making friends in uni. If you're anything like me, I was an introvert in high school because getting into med is hard and I spent more time studying than trying to talk to people, make friends, or going to parties, or being someone cool. In contrast, now I would definitely call myself an extrovert, even though I'm definitely not a social butterfly of any means. As you're going into your first year of university, the advice that almost everyone gives you is that you should introduce yourself to people and things will go well. But the advice that I wish I was given in first year is that it's not as simple as that. Sometimes going up to someone and just introducing yourself without a plan can work and you can make really good friends through that. But the thing that I wish I was told is that it's much better to talk to someone with a plan. This isn't a meticulous plan that you can use to direct the conversation, but it's just to say that when you go and introduce yourself to someone, you should have something in mind at least that you want to ask them about before you start the conversation. At the start of the year, you can ask them about their holidays, you can ask them about how they're feeling to start medical school, during the year, you can ask them how they're coping with the workload, whether they've been working or going out. And in general, just having something to kickstart the conversation is really important in my opinion. I think this is really important so that you're not just going into a conversation blind and you're more likely to be able to avoid those awkward moments where you both just don't have anything to say. On this note, another tip I have for just being a good conversationalist in general is to ask leading questions. If they're talking about somewhere they traveled over the holidays, instead of asking, oh, is your family from there? Ask instead, why did you travel to that place? It means that instead of a yes or no, more closed off discussion, they can discuss a lot of things that they might be thinking about and they might not give you an answer that you were expecting. My other tip in regards to conversations, making friends, introducing yourself to people is to end the conversation quickly and move on to doing something else. I know that ideally you would be able to bond with someone instantly over a shared interest and just be able to talk to them forever, 
but in most cases, it's quite hard to find something like that on first meeting of someone. So that you're both not trapped in an endless loop of small talk, which isn't really a bad thing necessarily, it's a good idea to try and move the conversation on to doing an activity of some sort. Even doing something as simple as walking so that you're side by side instead of facing each other can make conversations flow much more naturally. Now, my final piece of advice is probably one of the most important and it's about motivation. I really don't want to scare you guys going into medical school and make it seem like it was really hard because in reality, medical school was and continues to be one of the best parts of my life. But that being said, it is important to acknowledge that medical school can be very difficult at times. Semesters are really long. You have more content to cover than all of your other peers studying other degrees. And in general, it can be very overwhelming. During these moments, it's easy to forget your love for medicine and why you joined medical school in the first place. It can be difficult, but in moments where you seem like you're running out of motivation and you're forgetting why you started the journey in the first place, try and think about the reasons as to why you got into medical school and remember how hard you worked to get in. Don't be afraid to reach out and get help if you need it because ultimately remembering the reason why you wanted to study medicine in the first place and nurturing that is really important. Finally, the piece of advice that everyone gives about medical school is to work smarter, not harder. And for that, you should definitely check out this video here.